Good morning, North America. Welcome to Church Talk TV, lively talk about life, church, and church life. I'm your co-host, Dr. Bill Tenney Britton, and I'm joined as usual by my co-host, Dr. Chris Tenney Britton, and we're broadcasting from our studio in Columbia, Missouri, the heartland of America. Say good morning, Chris. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Church Talk TV. Chris and Bill Tenney Britton here today to talk about what we think is the most difficult task in the church. We today are talking about church turnaround. And I know some of us may think, what? But when we talk about church turnaround, we're talking about churches being fully effective, sustainable, and faithful to the Great Commission. Now, I used to just say uh, effective and sustainable, but Bill here added in faithfulness. And when we talk about faithfulness, people would push back because they'd say, wait a minute, we're faithful churches. And we'd say to them, but we're talking about faithfulness to the Great Commission. In other words, growing churches, making disciples, bringing new people into the kingdom of God, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, and training them to be disciples of Jesus Christ who go out and make more disciples of Jesus. Now, you might say back to us, hey, our church is doing all that. We're doing great things out in our neighborhood and into the world, and we're doing great things in our church for people to come. But the next piece about this is effective and sustainable. Are you effectively reaching others? If you're church isn't growing, you're not being effective. And if you're not sustainable, and let me say to you, if you are not growing, if you're not effective, there is no way that you are going to be able to sustain ministry, let alone your church, for the next years, five years, 10 years, 25 years down the road. So we are committed and sold out to church turnaround, helping churches be effective, sustainable, and faithful to the Great Commission. And in that vein, we have brought today a guest with us, uh, Kyle Ermoyan, who is going to talk about his upcoming book, Church Turnaround A to Z. Hey, good morning, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Uh, good morning, Tenny Britton's good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm excited about having this opportunity to, uh, to share about what is a passion for my heart, and that's to take an existing church and turn it around for the glory of God and for the uh, fulfillment of the Great Commandment and the Great Commission. Awesome. Well, we're so glad to have you we here. Are. So, Kyle, let's just, let's just jump right into it. You're writing another book on church turnaround. There's got to be so many books on church turnaround. What are you What are you doing, and why are you writing a book on that? I mean, yeah. What, what's, yeah. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I was in pastoral ministry for over 30 years, and I had the great privilege of being able to be the senior pastor of two churches in that time. One was a plateaued 50-year-old church, and when I say plateaued, let me just say it was a dying congregation, because if you're plateaued, you're dying. If you're not growing, you're dying. So I took over that church. That was one of the churches that I was with, and then I started, launched a new church, uh, in Hayes, Kansas, and in that church, I uh, I was able to uh, to sustain the growth of that church for over 21 years. People would ask me from time to time, which is the most difficult of those churches to grow, an existing church or a new church? And I like to use the nautical theme that uh, that a new church is kind of like a speedboat. It's really e easy to maneuver. You can get around obstacles. You know, there's dangers in it. It's easy to tip over. But uh, it's easy to get it started and get it going in the right direction, as opposed to an existing church, which is more like a cruise ship, big and bulky and difficult. And most of the people on the ship feel like they're passengers and not necessarily crew members. And so that's just a whole different thing. So in the midst, they're both challenging churches to be able to, to grow. But I find that the, the church turnaround is even more difficult than the others. Yeah. Awesome. So as you're writing this book, and, and to be fair to our audience, we've seen the book. It, it's not published yet, but it's in the hands of the editor. And and, and we've been looking at it, working with it, whatever. But hey, will, will you tell us, tell our audience yeah. what they're going to find in this church turnaround A to Z book? Well, sure. I, I use the A to Z 
process because it's easy to break it down into 26 bite-sized pieces, beginning with A and going to Z. So as an example, A would be ask God for a big dream for your church. And, uh, and that's where it all starts anyway, is our, our relying upon God and for that big dream that comes from him, not just our desire of what we want to do. In regards to asking God for a, for a big church idea, uh, I got the idea originally from Jim Collins's book, Built to Last, where he came up with this concept of BHAG. B-H-A-Z, big, hairy, audacious goal, and that every business needs a goal like that to unify the people. Likewise, in regards to an existing church, we need a big, God-sized dream to be able to gather around. Bill, you wrote a book called, If You're Wanting to Herd Cats, You Need a Bigger Mouse. And I love the title for that book, by the way, but your premise is the same. Most churches don't have that unifying purpose and mission. Now, I'm not saying that they don't have a mission statement. Every church has one and they put it on their bulletin. I'm talking about a, a unifying purpose that people can get behind and move forward with. So that's what the A was. Ask God for a big time dream. The B is believe that you can do it because self-doubt comes into all of us, especially when you're trying to change things like that. I know for a fact that it's a lonely process to be able to do so. We start to doubt ourselves. Am I smart enough? Is this idea good enough? Is, is this really from God? Well, kind of like with Moses, he had those doubts as well in regards to the Hebrew people. We need to trust the fact that God has provided for us all of the tools that we need to fulfill that dream. And if God guides us to that place, he is going to uh, keep us fulfilled in the midst of that. And then that brings us to the C. And the C is communicate that vision. Now, we all know Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. But what we recognize is that that encapsulated that sense of vision of unity. And he was able to use that to uh, to change the world. That's what we want to do with communicating our vision. And actually, I wrote about communicating your vision in the last net results. And so if people want to find out more about that, they can go to the net results last month. Well, which, which brings me to the point is that in the upcoming, the next uh, net results uh, issue, you're going to have another excerpt of your book. Is that right? Absolutely. Actually, I'm going to have two and uh, back to back two chapters from my upcoming book. And it involves the T, which is turn your members into ministers and recognizing that all your members are ministers. And then the U, which is unleash your members for ministry and how important that is. And remembering all your members are ministers. I used to stand up in front of our congregation and you know how pastors love to be recognized when they come visiting a church. So I'd say, how many ministers do we have with us today? And people would look around, but the expectation was everybody who was in that congregation, everybody in that audience, I'd say, how many members are in here? And I'd get them all to raise their hand, really to get the concept out there that everyone, if you're a member of this church, you are called to ministry. And then to unleash those members, those ministers into ministry, not just sticking them on a committee, but really getting them involved. One of the things that I used to do, and actually, this is the very first article I ever wrote for net results. And this was probably 30 years ago about business card evangelism, how I would, here's the question, why do only the pastors of a church have the cards for a church. So I designed a card that everyone within the congregation can have. Instead of having my name imprinted on it, there's a line where everyone can write their name in so that they have a sense of ownership that they are not passengers on a cruise ship, but they <laughs> are crew members on this oikos that is moving forward, this family of God, this, this ship that is a uh, fulfilling the great commandment and the great commission. 
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Go ahead. No, I just, Kyle, as I'm thinking about big visions and filling them, I've been told that that if you think that you can complete the work that you think you're supposed to do, it's not God's vision. That that right. God's visions are like Moses's vision. They're beyond our comprehension. And, and we'll even say, I can't do that. Then you have a sense uh, that it may be God's maybe God's vision. Well, we are running out of time. And, and so I wanted to ask you, is there anything else you'd like to add to share with our viewers before we have you back again? Well, sure. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, it's lonely in this process. It's a difficult process, whether you're starting a new church or you're trying to turn around an existing church. And I just want to encourage people to, to seek out help in books and in, and, and seminars and things like that, but really to to understand that you can't do this alone. And I, that's why I really want to encourage people to reach out to someone like uh, the Effective Church Group who can come alongside and help you not only to navigate those icebergs, but also to be an encouragement to you because that's exactly what we need. We need someone to come alongside us to encourage us in the little victories and say, way to go. You're doing it because we need that kind of support to sustain the growth that God wants in our churches. Awesome. Well, before we go, I want to just talk about a, a, a resource that I think our viewers would be interested in, and that is the Ministry in the Small Church Workbook. It's, it's not about turnaround. It's about getting ready so that you can do turnaround. If you're the pastor of a small church, it, you, you're in a very different animal than if, you know, you're you're uh, growing a mega church like <laughs> Kyle did. Uh, but in to get ready for the turnaround process, there's some skills that you need to have and put together in, in getting your church ready. And you need to know how to build, for instance, small church morale, because small churches historically have pretty low self-esteem. And it, it, the book deals with finances and all the rest, getting you ready so that you can lead a turnaround. Hey, we are almost out of time. You can find that uh, those resources there right below here, the link to that the Small Church Workbook. We hope that you'll uh, take a look at that. Kyle, thank you so thank much you. for being thank here. We you. appreciate it. Yes. And we'll see you again soon. Say goodbye, Chris. Uh, goodbye. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.